Since the founding of the notorious Lake Lanier in the 1950s, there have been a shockingly high number of incidents, which have shrouded these waters even deeper and deeper in mystery. Beneath the waters, there are still 27 bodies that have never been recovered. There have also been hundreds upon hundreds of emergency rescues and over 700 accidental drownings or boating deaths, many of which are still unsolved as to why the person and died. Some of the boating accidents even include boats suddenly bursting into flames. And it's said that Lake Lanier contains the most dangerous and deadly underwater surface in the United States. At the bottom, now surrounded by mud and algae, is the town of Oscarville and other sunken communities as well, along with their graveyards that were never properly moved. It started seemingly innocently in 1946 when United States Congress approved the Rivers and Harbors Act. Their goal was to better the waterways throughout the United States. Chattahoochee River had a long history of overflowing and flooding the surrounding neighborhoods. The growing city of Atlanta also needed a better water source and hydroelectric power. So the government allocated $45 million for the Army Corps of Engineers to build Buford Dam and Lake Lanier. Instead of protecting their people, they built a death trap. From day one, the project was controversial and messy. There were hundreds of families, businesses, and churches spread out over the 50,000 acres the U.S. government claimed for the lake. They displaced up to 750 families and claimed that they moved 20 graveyards as they filled the lake. But scuba divers and documentaries have proven that those 20 graveyards and their headstones continue to blanket the bottom of the waters. The town of Oscarville itself, which was flooded by Lake Lanier, had its own controversial past. It had been a town where over 1,100 African Americans lived. However, in 1912, an 18-year-old white woman by the name of May Crow was found beaten and bloodied in a nearby forest. She died of her wounds without ever being able to tell who attacked her. Without anyone to blame, the people of Oscarville pointed the finger at three African Americans in the area who almost certainly had nothing to do with May's death. The three men were unjustly lynched, and the white residents began to systematically terrorize the African Americans living there until they drove them all out of town. All of these things, plus the fact that they couldn't even agree on a name for the lake until it was midway through construction, was seen as a bad omen by many. Once the lake was complete, it was completely plagued with tragedy and death, only solidifying further that it was a dark place. There are countless legends about the deadly waters. One of the first comes from 1958 when Miss Delia May Parker and Susie Roberts were driving to Dawsonville to a dance when as they crossed the Lake Lanier Bridge, Susie inexplicably lost control of her car and drove off the side of the bridge, plunging into the welcoming waters of Lake Lanier. The two women vanished into the darkness, and a year later a fisherman found what was left of a body, but it was missing its hands and two toes. At that time, it was unidentifiable aside from the fact that she was wearing a blue dress. The 1950s Ford sedan and the body of Delia May were not found for another 31 years. It was when they found her that they concluded that the second body that had been found so long ago was that of Susie Roberts. This, of course, sparked countless campfire stories. Stories like this one have continued every single year. In early June of 2022, a 20-year-old man drowned while out for what should have been just a fun swim in the lake. In May of 2021, a boat mysteriously exploded, leaving two teens seriously injured. While many of the deaths are in fact mysterious, it isn't all an unknown as to why some people have died. Because of the haphazard way the construction and filling of Lake Lanier was handled, the lake floor is chaotic and unpredictable. When the water levels lower during droughts, the amount of debris and rubble at the bottom are exposed and closer to the surface of the water, but not easily visible. As boats fly across the lake, it's easy for some of this unseen debris to shred the bottom of the boats, 
or grab onto them and launch the passengers into the water. Swimming in the lake is even more treacherous. An innocent swimmer kicking around in the water could easily kick a chunk of concrete or jagged metal from a shipwreck or gravestone and slice open or even break their foot, making it impossible to swim. Other scuba divers or snorkelers get tangled and caught up in the rubble, joining the other bodies down at the bottom. The depths of the water are also impossible to predict. One moment you could be walking on what seems like a shallow, flat surface, only to suddenly fall into a 50-foot hole full of shipwreck parts and never be seen again. What's surprising is that while there have been many petitions to close the lake and lawsuits against it, over 10 million people continue to visit these deadly waters every single year. There are even all kinds of sport competitions that take place there, including the Summer Olympics in 1996. They have some of the largest light shows in America on the lake. It's even been used for filming shows like Ozark. When Lake Lanier was created, it was never intended for recreational use. And as long as people continue to ignore or be unaware of its past, it will continue to claim the lives of the unsuspecting. So visitors, beware. If you like this, make sure you check out my video on the Blue Hole disaster as well. See you in the next video.